Alleluia! Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia! Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, 
but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message th spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all people, but to us who were who were chosen by God as witnesses. And the people who drank with him after he rose, drank and ate with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of living and the dead. All forfeits testify of prophets are prophets prophets are testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and he went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is a day for celebrating, a time for celebrating, a time when we are gathering together again to worship in all the ways we can, whether it's online, some in person, 
and looking forward to the day when we can do so all together as we have before. It is not impossible to imagine that regathering. It is not impossible to imagine that hope. A friend of mine used to say to me all the time, when I'd wonder if something is possible, he would say, in a world in which Jewish carpenters are raised from the dead, anything is possible. Of course, I'd laugh, and it always managed to bring the anxiety down a bit in the room. But I think about it differently now. In a world where Jewish carpenters are raised from the dead, anything is possible. On Monday Thursday, I spent a bit of time talking about some things that made me uncomfortable when I was coming back to church. The prayer of humble access and the foot washing on Monday Thursday in particular. On Good Friday, I talked about how Jesus upends our sense of what God is about in going to the cross. Today on Easter, I want to talk about these two things together, the discomfort of the day and the upending of what we think is possible. What could be uncomfortable about Easter? It's hats and dresses and egg hunts and baskets and chocolate. What could be uncomfortable about that? I suppose for me, the discomfort comes in the comfort the assurance of things unseen is a little disturbing if you, like me, have a skeptical mind. You see, I think it is uncomfortable to me that an answer to death has been given to us. It is uncomfortable to me to think that a man rose from the dead. People don't do that. It is uncomfortable for me to believe that by resurrection, death is conquered. It is comfortable for me to believe that death is the end. It is comforting and comfortable to think that a Jewish carpenter being raised from the dead is as absurd as it sounds. It's comfortable because it squares with what I know, with what we know about how the world works. We know just how it is, how it's supposed to be. Here's the problem though, I just can't let it go, or perhaps it won't let me go. I'd much rather put down these mysteries and deal with certainties, but that is not what we are given on Easter day. I'd rather sort of ignore this stuff altogether and feel convinced that I know the end of the story, a story that ends when this mortal life does. That would actually probably be more comfortable. The challenge is, the uncomfortable thing is, if this improbable story is true, then it is the most discomforting, most disturbing thing we can possibly imagine. It is beyond our imagining, beyond our ability to understand, beyond our capacity to frame within human experience. We have to rely on this telling of the story in the Gospels, on the eyewitness accounts, on the passing down from generation to generation the truth of those first encounters with the risen Lord. We rely on the testimony of the lives lived in and for Christ through the ages. If this story is to be believed, though, then it must be lived. To assent to its propositions, to believe it to be true, to even grudgingly admit that it might be true, moves us from here to there. It moves us from a place where we are not stirred by the proposition to a place where we are inspired by the truth of what we come to know. It moves us from a way of viewing ourselves as the protagonist of our own little story to being part of something that is cosmic and unyielding in its import. If you believe this story, what difference does it make to you? How might you live this story? I'm not arguing today that you should believe it. In fact, I'd argue that the pursuit of trying to prove each jot and tittle of the story is a fool's errand. The question is not what factually 
undeniably and indisputably took place at a certain time in a certain place on a dusty hill in a fallen empire 2,000 years ago. The question is what is happening now, today? How is resurrection happening again and again in your heart and in mine? What does remembering this story stir in you that would lay dead if you didn't believe it? What tomb is cracking open in your heart? What hope is coming alive in you? What new life is bursting in you? What lost love or buried dream is rising in you? What is being knit together? What is it that is changing because you believe? If nothing is changing, if nothing is undone and remade, if no thing, no day, no dawn feels new and full of promise, then what do we really believe? Because this story at its heart is the joy of Christian living. It's the joy, the purpose of our Christian life. Because in a world in which Jewish carpenters are raised from the dead, anything is possible. Anything you thought lost may be found. Anything you thought damned may be forgiven. Anything you feared hopeless may be redeemed. Anything you prayed may come to pass. Any tears may be dried. Any wounds may be healed. Any loss or lament or sorrow or mourning. Anything which had seemed cast down may be raised up in light of this story. Anything that had grown old is being made new. Any broken, bowed, or bent spirit may stand tall, and any path once dreamed of may yet be walked. In a world where Jewish carpenters are raised from the dead, anything is possible. Anything may be hoped for, reached for, and held. In such a world in which hopes and dreams and passions and loves are never in vain, in such a world we might imagine the most unimaginable things because we know the most unimaginable thing, the defeat of death, to be true. We might even imagine that God loves us, not just all of us in a sort of cosmic way, but that God loves you and me. We might imagine that in the midst of every trial and grief, God has been there with us. God has known our affliction, borne our suffering, and redeemed our despair. In the midst of our sin, not despite them, but because of them, God came to be loved, to be thought lost, and to restore our hope again and again. It would be easier, probably, to not believe. It would be easier not to hope, frankly. It would be more comfortable, less taxing, more of a consolation in some ways, not to believe. Because in believing, we are charged with acting. In believing, we are charged with living as if this story is true each and every day in our lives. In believing, we are charged with the sudden and earth-shattering realization that we have literally no excuse not to dream of more. No love becomes foolish, no welcome too effusive, no poverty is tolerable, no violence may be condoned, no hunger or oppression nor mistreatment can just be the way it is, just the way things are, just how it goes. Because as Jesus, reveals the limitlessness of his love, the limits of our own become more starkly revealed. You see, Jesus calls us to more, more love, more joy, more forgiveness, more grace, more mercy, more welcome, more gentle and generous and loving hearts. That, that is just the way it is. That is just how it goes for Christians. He prays, that our joy may be complete. That completeness will be found in living a life made more whole by believing in a world suffused with a grace like this, a love like his. Nothing is impossible. Nothing in a world where Jesus lives can be just the way things are. 
If we believe the story, then we must live it. If we believe this story is possible, then we must live and work as if nothing is impossible. If we're going to live it, we must do it with abandon, offering ourselves and souls and bodies and dreams and hopes and more to be a living and holy sacrifice to God. With God, nothing is impossible. In a world where Jewish carpenters are raised from the dead, anything is possible. That is just the way it is. Can you believe it? Through the Paschal Mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism, by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God and the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons? Loving your neighbor as yourself. I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I bid your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishop, Jennifer, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I bid your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I bid your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I bid your prayers for all who seek a closer relationship with God. Pray that they may find and be found by God.
and bid your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I bid your thanksgiving for the living culture of the Paspayaki and Tahana Atom peoples, the traditional custodians of the land on which we stand. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace, following the examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary and Blessed Philip, to glorify Christ in our own day. O God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Now as we prepare for this spiritual communion, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Thank you. 
mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we may find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts that you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We, we praise, praise you, we bless you, you. we give, give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Philip, with the patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, O Father, send us out to do the work that you have given us to do, to love and serve you in faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.